Hi guys, and welcome to my YouTube gaming channel. My name is Not Xander's Rain. Konnichiwa. And this little cute icon on the left is Connie. Today we'll be showing you how to get the emulator version of Identity V. And by the end of this video, you're gonna have the original version on one side and the emulator version on the other side. So I'm just gonna reset my phone and clear out everything so that I can start fresh with you guys and guide you through. Alright, so my phone has been reset, so you're gonna start off like this. And what you wanna do is to open Safari and type in www.tweakboxapp.com. Alright, that's tweakboxapp.com. And now you're in the Tweakbox website, and it's the jailbreak alternative. So you're gonna click on install now. And there's a pop-out, just allow, and it will bring you to this page. And what you want to do is click on install, put in your key password, and then click on install. Done. And when you get out, you're going to see that tweak box has been installed on your phone. Click on the tweak box and read their privacy. And once you're done with that, click on I accept. Wait for a few seconds. There's going to be an ad pop out. There you go. And just click away the ad. What we're going to do is go into apps and click on the app store apps. Now in here, you're going to scroll all the way down to look for Happy Chick emulator. Happy Chick, okay, right? Click on it. And then click on install. Now they're gonna have a pop out to ask for your permission. Just click on install and just wait for a few seconds. And when you get out of Tweakbox, you're gonna see that it's loading the Happy Chick icon. So just wait for a moment. Okay, there you go. You have Happy Chick now. But when you click on it, there's gonna be a pop out saying that it's an untrusted enterprise developer. So don't panic, don't worry about this. So just click on cancel, go to settings, go to general, and scroll all the way down to profiles and device management. Click on JK Bao Internet Technology Co. And click on trust JK Bao Internet Technology Co. Right, just trust it and get out from settings and now when you click on happy chick it can run so they have a disclaimer here which you have to read before you press agree there's always a pop out for ads and this icon ask if you can share the location and you just click ok right so now we're in happy chick Woo! finally that took a while okay so now we're gonna look for the identity v emulator so what you want to do is go into category and look for ios and when you click ios these are all the mfi games that are available to play with controller for iphone so you're going to scroll all the way down looking for identity v And you will find that there are two versions. Okay, one is a Japan version and the other one is normal. Frankly speaking, I've installed both before and there's no difference from it. But for this purpose, I'm just gonna install the normal one, which is just Identity V. Click on online install one, and there's a pop-up saying that you gotta wait for a while before you see the icon is loading. Okay, so just push I got it. They would ask for your permission to install and just click on install so right now we'll just wait for it to install and this is gonna take a very long time okay so I'm just gonna fast forward this all right so when it's installed you can click on the icon and while it's installing the updates and such downloading the patches then you can see that there's this icon then this pop-up comes out and make sure you read this thoroughly okay because this pop-up is not gonna come out twice 
is just giving you some instructions on how to deal with your emulator. So just make sure that you read this before you press got it, okay? This is really important guys. So over here you can see that it's a different language, not to worry, just press that button and it will log you out. What it does is that it just asks you to restart your identity v and that's exactly what you're doing. Okay, so when you log back into the game, you can see that the emulator icon is already there. And you already have a default configuration. And here you can see a bunch of users already shared their configurations for the controller. And there's for iPad, for iPhone, there's something for everybody. And this is where you'll be saving your configuration under my configs, okay? So we're just going to get out of this for a moment because I'm going to show you what's important. When the game has started, go to user center and you can see that you're logged in as a guest, okay? So if you already have your account binded in the original, you want to click on switch account and here you're going to type in confirm. And you can try to log into your Game Center account, Facebook or Twitter, but I find that Game Center doesn't work very well with emulators. So sometimes you're gonna get uh, an error like this, saying that you can't and you have to restart, okay? But here is an example of me just logging in through my Twitter without using the Twitter app. and this seems to work better for me. So I've logged in and it's under Noxander's account and if I check on my bind account, you'll see that it automatically will bind with my game center and my Facebook as well. Okay? So yeah, that's how it works. Okay, so now you can see that I'm already logged into my account, my Noxander's account. And so we're gonna set up the controller. So we're gonna go to custom script and we're just gonna play with beginner bots, okay? So make sure by this time you've already turned on your controller and you've already set it to work. You can see that the blue light is already on. Everything's good. So beginning of the game, what you want to do is click on the game sir icon and you can see the configuration. Okay, so we're going to start fresh. I'm just going to clear the configuration and I'm going to uh, customize my own buttons. So here you can see that you can drag each and every one of the buttons to map with the screen, whatever action buttons there are on the screen. And um, this is going to take a while and you, you'll you just have to deal with it. You know, you just have to assign each button to map with every action there is on screen. And if the hunter is near you, then not to worry, just uh, move somewhere else that is safe and uh, continue configuring it. What's great about these buttons is that you can even assign it to uh, be big or small. You can change the size, you can change the speed of the click, like how fast you want it to trigger or how slow you want it to be triggered, it's up to you. And also for the joystick buttons, you can adjust the size of it as well as the radius. And this makes a whole lot different when you start to move around. So for example, that's my joystick button and this would be the camera button for the right joystick. And you can, you can adjust how smooth the flow goes. Um, this is a bit too fast for me, but some people like it, especially if they want to kite. Um, but this is, this is not for me, so I'm just going to adjust it to a more slower pace. Wow. 
And yeah, that's so much better. So I'm going to be using this setting. Make sure you take time setting up your controller configuration. And once you're done with everything, you can save your configuration so that the next time, you know, if you ever lose it, you can go back and log into that configuration as well. And if you ever want to share it out to the world, you can do so by clicking share and they will ask you to log in or sign up to their account. So that's it. Uh, that's, that is all to it. I hope this video has been useful. Uh, it took a while for me and Connie to come up with it, but thank you for requesting it. We'll see you guys again in the next video. Knox and Connie, over and out.